good morning and welcome to practical christian lessons and we are discussing trinity today um i'm excited about this one again we're going to try and keep these videos a little shorter so we're going to get right on into this one um, and we're going to start with a little bit of new testament and intertestamental books don't worry it'll matter john 1 1 through 3 and then wisdom of solomon 9 is what we'll be reading from 9 and then 18 is what we're reading from this in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything that was made. And this matters. We'll be talking about Genesis today. Of course, as I said, we'll not be focusing in the series on the New Testament. I'm just using this to illustrate that what John is pulling from here is not novel. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, the intertestamental period. Wisdom 9, verses 1 through 4, and then 18, 14 through 19. And there will be links to this in the, in the show notes as well. O God of my fathers, and Lord of mercy, who hast made all things by thy word, and by thy wisdom hast formed man, to have dominion over the creatures thou hast made, and rule the world in holiness and righteousness, and pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give me the wisdom that sits by thy throne, the wisdom that sits by thy throne, and do not reject me from among thy servants. And then 18. For while gentle, gentle silence enveloped all things, and night in its swift course was now half gone, thy all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne, into the midst of the land that was doomed, a stern warrior carrying the sharp word of thy authentic command, and stood and filled all things with death, and touched heaven while standing on earth. Then at once apparitions and dreadful dreams greatly troubled them, and unexpected fears assailed them. And one here and another there, hurled down half-dead, made known why they were dying, for the dreams which disturbed them forewarned them of this, so they might not perish without knowing why they suffered. The importance here, of course, being on the word, the memra, as we were talking about in the Aramaic Targums, and will come up here in this video. As we see here in the second temple period of which John was pulling from, this shows the very foundation and thought of knowledge in the Jewish tradition that Christians continued in faithfully, following when looking at God's divine self-revelation. So with that, let's delve in and start with a prayer. By your word and by your wisdom, Lord, you formed all things. Praise be to you, our Father and Creator, Lord Almighty. Open our eyes so that we may see the truth clearly and faithfully follow it as you have revealed it to us. And we're going to look at Genesis 1, 26, 3, 22, and 11, 7 through 8 today. The importance here being on the use of us. And I'm starting here. This is one of the classic go-to texts in a lot of these Christian debates. So let's get into it. Genesis 1, 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And that should have had verse 27 on there as well. So God created man in his, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And then Genesis 3.22 says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. And then Genesis 11.7-8 is, Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, so they left off building the city. I, an important note, um, and we'll touch on this in another video, is is seeing the Lord in living. Well, here the Lord has come down and physically entered into the world and done this. This is something modern Jewish thought, especially post-rabbinic, is very, very unhappy with. The idea of God appearing in the world. Ben Shapiro, in many interviews, has, has said this is not a Jewish idea. If you read ancient Jewish thoughts, that is very much not the case. They absolutely affirmed God entering the physical world and the sort of a revision that happened, we talked about this in our last video, with figures like Rashi and Ben Ezra and Maimonides, um, was a revision of, of older Jewish tradition. This idea that using terms like the Memra and the Targums and stuff is like this personification or in, impersonal 
a manifestation of something that is like a buffer between the Lord. Um, as many scholars have noted in Jewish thought as well, not just not just Christian. Um, if you even if you just change the meaning of member to mean uh, appearance or manifestation, you still have the problem of the Lord is still being the one described as having done the thing. So even if you say, oh, it's just describing a thing as like a, a manifestation, you still have the problem in, in modern Jewish thought of the Lord has still come down and done this. It doesn't matter how you how you word that. Um, back to the back to what we're talking about here. Uh, we are only going to touch on um, uh, another passage to look at would be Genesis 18. Um, that entire episode, we'll be talking about that in another video. Um, but just want to note that here. It's worth touching, and many Jewish scholars note this has happened in 126 and 322. The text in this passage moves between plural and singular regularly, as does Genesis 18. Robert Alter is a recent figure who knows this in his work, The Five Books of Moses, as do many others. Here, of course, we also hear John's intentional parallel in John 1 through 3 in use of the term logos. I'll just touch on this since it's clear, since its use is clear, and we are focusing on the Old Testament use. To quote a good friend of mine, glancing through the Septuagint, there are at least two places logos is used in reference to a creation account. First, in Job 26, 14, where the Greek roughly reads, a small moisture of his word, his logos, we hear. Where the Hebrew is translated, how how small a whisper we hear of him. Then in Psalm 33, 6, by the word, by the logos of the Lord, and the breath, the ruach of his mouth, God made all things. Here we have word, Lord, and spirit, the Trinity enacting creation. And we will get to those passages as well at a later point. Uh, I'm going to read from two Targums for this. We're reading from tar Targum Onkelos, Onkelos, which is one of the um, most authoritative, if not the most authoritative Targums from the Babylonian Targums, and then Targum Jonathan. So Targum um, Onkelos on Genesis 1, 26, 27 says, Elohim said, let us make man in our image as our likeness and let him dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven, the animals, all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on earth. And thus Elohim created man in his image in the form of Elohim, he created him male and female. He created them. And you'll get arguments in our modern day, um, right? People will sort of argue. Even modern Christian figures will argue, and I, I will argue this is, is listening to uh, the wrong voices on this um, as the influence there for Christians. And will say that, you know, this is the Lord talking to the angels or other members of the divine council and saying, let us make them in our image, speaking of the angels and divine council. Here, on the clearly Targum Onkelos is, is attributing it all to to, not, to, to the Elohim. So, the then important note, right? Uh, we look at Targum Jonathan. He mentions angels. And the Lord said to the angels who ministered before him. You know, he mentions these angels. Who had been created in the second day of creation of the world. Um, I'll let everyone have their own angelology, angelology. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the fowl which are in the atmosphere of heaven and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every reptile creeping upon the earth. And this is why important, right? If you read just that, it sounds sounds like that idea, right? He made them with in the image of himself and the angels and the other divine figures. Read the next sentence. This is why it's important for everyone, in, including in this. Go read this for yourself. I'll, I'll have links. Go read this for yourself. Don't just trust me. And on verse 27, um, Targum Jonathan says, And the Lord created man in his likeness in the image of the lord he created him right so he mentions the angels and still attributes it to the lord with 240 and eight members with 365 nerves and overlaid them with skin and filled it with flesh and blood male and female in their bodies he created them i love targum jonathan um he he, he has some great language there and then on genesis 11 uh verses 7 through 8 here from targum onkelos come let us descend let us be revealed and jumble their language, that they will not understand one another's language. Adonai scattered them from there all over the face of the earth, and they stopped building their cities, right? This, again, the switch of plural to singular. And you have to have this, this question, what explains this better? Um, is it the, the modern Jewish tradition, or is it older Jewish traditions that have continued on in Christianity? I will argue it's the latter. And then Targum um, Jonathan on this, and the Lord said to the 70 angels, again, he brings up the angels, which stand before him, come, we will descend and will there commingle their language, that a man shall not understand the speech of his neighbor. And 
the word of the Lord, the memra of the Lord, as we talked about in our last video and we'll continue to talk about through this series, was revealed against the city. And with him, 70 angels, right, with him, with the memra, having reference to, with him, 70 angels, having reference to 70 nations, each having its own language, and thence the writing of its own hand. And he dispersed them from thence upon the face of all the earth into 70 languages. And one knew not what his neighbor would say, but one slew the other, and they ceased from building their city. Again, I love the the language of Targum Jonathan. It's very, very over the top. I love it. Um, we are going to end there. Uh, again, I want to make these videos a little bit shorter. So let's look at Psalm 104 quickly. Um, just as a, as a closing prayer, it describes creation and sustaining of creation as well. Here it says here in... Uh, verse 30 um i forgot where i put my book there if i can open up this ribbon my hands are quite clumsy this morning um psalm 140 verse 30 this is from from the kjv we this is the anglican um office book if anyone doesn't know what this is when thou lettest thy breath go forth they shall be made and thou shalt renew the face of the earth right this idea of the lord Right, this is a very important idea that God not only creates, but sustains creation. So with the psalmist, let us end by praising God, by thanking him for the beauty of creation, for the fruits of the field, and for his continued work of preserving it. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless.